Welcome back to MuscleMentor.net. I'm Brad Hall and this is Justin Harris and we're uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about cyclic dextrins and the, and the para-workout mm -hmm. uh, protocols that are out there. Uh, I, I can talk about a number of things with this. For one, uh, uh, cyclic dextrins are just a circular or a conic shaped dextrose, dextrin. And so they're a big, uh, highly branched cyclic dextrin mean that it's the same thing but it's just highly branched. So it's a very complex carbohydrate with a high molecular weight because it has a high molecular weight it has a low osmolarity meaning uh, and I've explained this many times with waxy maize but if you have like cyclic dextrin in a, in a maybe like a 10-15% solution probably has an osmolarity around 10-15% to 15 with osmolarity your blood is around 300 nanograms per deciliter and so if you drink something that's around 300 there's no gradient for it to pass through the stomach it's just you know it's like it's like pouring water into water, you know, they just kind of sit there. And so that, that, that drink will pool in your stomach. There's nothing to pull it through your stomach into your intestines. So just that, those are the drinks you'll drink when you drink a lot of it and you start getting bloated. Now with the low osmolarity, like high molecular weight carbohydrates, like the high branch psychodextrins, is with that really high molecular weight, it turns into like a bowling ball and there's a huge transportation gradient. So it hits your stomach where all the blood surrounding is at, at a osmolarity of 300 and that's at 10, it just, it's, sucking it right in through your through your stomach and your small intestines so you don't get that bloated and the small intestines is where the digestion where the carbohydrates actually enter the blood they get broken down into single simple sugars and then pass across the small intestine so you have this big branch thing that goes down there and it can pluck it's got tons of surface area to pluck the dextrose from it to, that's why it enters your bloodstream fast despite being a complex carbohydrate and as it as it gets as it gets dragged down there mm -hmm. very quickly because of yeah. that conic shape it yeah. can trap much and, smaller molecules. And that's like, the thing that I've been frustrated with is when I, I you know, I took, took a couple of years away from the sport and uh, didn't follow anything really. It was back in school. When I came out, I kept hearing about psychodextrins and I, I was thinking, you know, like, like Febreze because that's how Febreze works. Febreze is psychodextrins and, you know, it, what happens is it has a cone and it's hydrophilic on one side, hydrophobic on the other. And so that, that conic shape comes in, in, in contact with stink and the stink gets pulled into the cone and then it stays there until you wash the area and then that reverses the hydrophobic hydrophilic and that stink gets removed and stuck to the washcloth basically. Or it can be used for hunting. I was actually thinking about it years before for hunting sprays. You spray it on and it traps the stink that way. And, and so it surprises me that, that the only aspect of the highly branched psychodextrins that people are really focusing on is the high molecular weight of it, not the conic shape where it could trap and there's different types of psychodextrins. Most of the, like the highly branched psychodextrins are beta psychodextrins, which are uh, six or seven, seven, seven uh, dextrose ring, the seven ring at the top of the cone. There's uh, beta psych or alpha psychodextrins, which are six, but there's gamma psychodextrins, which are an eight ring, which is much bigger and could trap larger molecules like amino acids. Mm -hmm. And that and that's something I'm. Yeah, we, you know, Brad and I have actually looked into that, and it, it's expensive to produce, but probably only because no one's really produced them. But that's my, my what I think is most interesting about the psychodectins is with that conic shape, they enter the gut really quickly, but they have that conic shape that can trap other particles in it and bring that down quickly also because amino acids are never going to be high molecular weight. They're, they're uh, low molecular weight, they have osmolarity almost the same as, as blood, which is why if you drink a ton of amino acid, you get yeah, blow it in and distend it gut and you feel like crap. And that's why. Well, this has the, the ability to trap those and bring them down into the stomach uh, quickly. Quickly, yeah. Which which no one seems to have jumped on. And I don't, I don't want to. If any millionaires are watching, I don't want to. I don't want to give away the secret. But that, it surprises me that no one's really focused on that aspect of it because I think that's really the most effective a aspect of it. But the like the highly branched psychodextrins really are. They're a great product to drink around your workout because because they leave the gut so quickly, you can drink oh, you can drink a lot of carbohydrates without getting bloated, and, and because it's uh, because it's such a complex molecule, it's 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 kind of confusing because it enters the bloodstream really quickly, quicker than a sugar, mm -hmm. but it enters the, but it doesn't spike insulin as much, and the reason is is you drink a you drink a, a, a dextrose drink a, a glucose drink. And it sits in your stomach, sits in your stomach, sits in your stomach. Finally, gets to the uh, small intestine, and then sh sh shows all the meat, all the sugar into your bloodstream. So you get that huge insulin spike. So that you know that and, and time frame that happens way out here. Mm -hmm. Well, you take psychodextrins, and it hits the stomach, goes right through the stomach, and it starts cleaving dextrose molecules off that off that structure, and so it's entering the bloodstream like this. So whereas the you know 
the Dutch girls drink all the sugar and the bloodstream all at once, you know, 30, 40 minutes later. By that point, you've already been getting a, a pool of, of blood sugar from the psychodextrins that entire time, but it never peaks quite as much. So it doesn't give you that insulin Keeps spike. It yeah, it gives a little bit of insulin, but you actually don't want that insulin spike. Uh, you don't want a huge insulin spike because uh, it's a central nervous system depressant. It, it makes training harder. And so that, that's really the benefit of it, is that you're able to drink it while you work out, it, it's giving you a constant supply, and when you mix it with amino acids, it's giving you a constant supply of amino acids and, uh, and, uh, and sugar, but it never spikes. You get a steady spike of insulin, enough spike in insulin to give you all the anti-catabolic effects of working out, give you the increase in amino acid uptake in the muscle, but without causing that central nervous system depression. But the problem is the beta cyclodextrins, the high grade cyclodextrins, probably aren't big enough to trap the to trap the amino acids inside the conic structure. They do help pull the amino acids through the stomach quicker, but they don't they don't pull it with it, they pull it separate. And I think that's an interesting thing. <laughs> like waxy maze, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. And really, uh, they're probably beta the highly branched psychoductions are really are the in thing right now, and so they're much more expensive than waxy maze. And I do think they taste better and I think they dissolve better, but I don't think the the molecular weight is much different. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking to save a few bucks and you want to do, follow the whole peri workout nutrition protocol, in my opinion, waxy maze is probably as good physiologically. It doesn't taste as good. It's chalky, but as far as how it how it affects you know the nutrients in your bloodstream, it probably works about the same as, as the highly branched psychodextrins. Mm -hmm. But I think the the psychodextrins, there's a whole realm of using them to, and uh, some pharmaceutical products. I don't know if they still do. I, I'm sure they do. Some of them actually use that as a as a means of getting. Uh, is getting uh, the active ingredient something that would yeah, be no, broken down really quickly. Pat, pat it, yeah, for it. something that gets broken down really easily by stomach acid. They mix it with psychodextrin, so it gets stuck in there, passes through the stomach quickly, where then it can get released into the bloodstream without getting broken down by the acid.